Glacier 3 is a racing game with small elements of vehicular combat kind of like Mario Kart. There are quite a few things that distinguish it from just being a kart racer clone, one of those being that when you kill someone with your weapons, they stay dead for the rest of the race. The weapons also require more precise aiming than in most kart racers, and there's one final and most important nuance built into the system. Each playable car is distinguished not just by its handling speed and traction, but also by its weapon types. There are three genres of weapons, there are bullets, missiles, and mines, but each car has a different bullet, missile, or mine type. All of the cars are not made equal, however. Quite a few of them are unlocked via challenges, and the cars unlocked via challenges tend to be a lot better. This one we're playing as right here, the Atomic Frost, replaces basic machine gun fire with what look like plasma balls. Utterly devastating plasma balls. With only one exception I can think of, each successive car you unlock seems to be better than the last one all around. Better speed, better handling, better weapons, and the weapons are really important because the AI racers seem to have a much easier time controlling themselves than you do. Speaking of the controls, this is a Wii game and thus controlled entirely with motion. You hold the controller like a steering wheel much like Mario Kart, and I am happy to tell you that the controls work perfectly fine. I never had one issue caused by the motion controls in the game. They feel responsive and natural, and believe me, if they weren't, I would notice, but after a short period of time, I completely forgot I was playing with the Wii controller. The controls are just that fine. Even though all of the cars have different handling and traction, none of their handling is ever frustrating, and I think that's really important. But there's got to be a reason that I said the AI cars have an easier time controlling themselves, right? Because if the controls aren't bad, then what's the problem? Well, there's the physics. The physics in this game are slightly exaggerated, to say the least. Sometimes they work in your favor when your car turns into Superman, and sometimes they work very much against you. Thankfully, the later cars you unlock tend to stay more glued to the track, but I still wound up losing more than a few races because I got stuck somewhere that the physics couldn't get me back out of. And being glued to the track isn't always a good thing because sometimes your car seems to get magnetized to a wall and it won't leave. And this is even more frustrating than wrecking yourself because it's so hard to get out of that position. You just have to desperately hope that your car flips upside down so that way it will respawn. Many of the challenge stages used to unlock the better cars revolve around these terrible physics, so they had to know to some degree that this was an issue. It's really not fun playing an otherwise good budget indie racing game and then screwing up because they were a little bit overzealous with their physics engine. There were so many other things they could have screwed up, but they didn't. The motion controls feel fine, the cars all feel different and have great variety in weapons. The boost is awesome and doesn't send you careening off track in spite of the physics. Then again, you fill the boost up by getting air using those same physics, which seems like a very poor decision. It's still remarkable that a game that looks like and often is considered shovelware isn't actually shovelware. There's a really good effort to make an indie racing game here and distinguish it from other kart racers. The tracks are short and there's only nine of them in total, but because of that it doesn't outstay its welcome. I had a pretty okay time here. 